Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to share with you guys the first project I made. I thought this would be something fun to do, taking a look at what I did in the past and the things I learned along the way. Usually my side projects are based on things that I want to learn more about or for my own personal use. So this will also give you guys a glimpse of my interests in the past. Hope you guys enjoy the video and get some inspiration out of it. So the first project I made is this program called Reiji. I started it back in the winter break of my first semester at university. At the time, I only knew two programming languages, Python and C. I learned Python from the coursework at school and I learned C in grade 12 from an online course called CS50. Since I was already pretty familiar with Python from schoolwork, I decided to use C for this project. As the description says, it's a reverse image searching program, but for anime pictures. I actually got the name from just translating English words into Japanese words. So if we actually try to translate this, we can see that the name translates to similar in English. And that's because this program provides similar results to the image that you provide. So what made me come up with this project? Well, back in the day, I was really into anime. And for some reason, I was really into saving pictures that I saw on Facebook and other websites. Shout out to Kirizuna for posting great pictures on Facebook. But Facebook would always compress the images, so I would never have a high quality version. And whenever I wanted to use it for something like a wallpaper, I would have to go online and reverse image search it for a high resolution image. Over time, the amount of images I saved piled up and I ended up with a lot of images that I wanted to find a higher resolution. So I decided to write this program and automate everything. So how did I come up with the actual image searching? Well, I actually use this website called iqdb.org and it provides a way for users to reverse image search their anime pictures. So all we have to do is select the image and then submit it. And then we will get results based on the image we submitted. So here we have two results, one from Senkaku channel and one from Danboru. The one downside to this website is that there is no official API. So you actually have to parse the HTML yourself, which is what my program did. Now let's take a look at how my program works. First, we'll clone the repo. Then we'll go inside the source folder and compile it using make. And then we can install it using sudo make install. But I won't be installing it because I already have it installed. And then we could just run our program. And you can see we get a help message if we don't provide any files. We can have a T option that tells the program to only show images with a certain percentage of similarity. We can have a capital T option which shows the tags associated with the image. And we have a Y option so that the user doesn't have to give any inputs. And it will just download the highest similarity result. So let's try that with the same picture that we gave it. We'll, we'll make it show the tags and we'll give it the same image. And now we can see we get our two results from Sankaku Complex and from Danboru. And then we can download it from, say, Danboru. And now we see we have it saved as this image. And we also have the tags that are associated with this image. We can t open it up. And there we go, we have our image that we just downloaded. Now let's take a look at the code base. We start off with our main function. Inside our main function, we have, I created a function called process args that processes the command line arguments. This is one of the few parts where I actually came back and changed. I don't remember what I was using before, but after taking a systems programming course in second year, I came back and changed the command line parsing to use get opt. After processing the arguments, we validate the file to make sure that it's within eight megabytes. So IQDB can actually process it. Then we run the RAGE function, which is where the majority of the code is. So inside this function, we upload the image onto iqdb.org. This part actually coded really weird. If we go to the file, you see that I actually coded it kind of like how a user would interact with this website rather than just sending an HTTP request. Back in the day, I didn't understand how HTTP form requests work or what they were even. So I just coded it like how a user would interact with the website. I would go to the website, look for the specific form input, then set that field to be the image. And then I would basically submit the form and then get the HTML back and parse the HTML. Meow. Meow. 
This part is also something that I came back and changed. After taking algorithms and data structures, I learned about vectors. The curl API kind of uses a callback function. So whenever more HTML is downloaded, it would call a function with the new HTML data and your program is supposed to do something with it. So initially what my program did was I would have a char array and whenever I, I run out of space, I would allocate enough space for the old HTML data plus the size of the new HTML data that I downloaded. Now this is really inefficient because every single time I get more data, I would have to reallocate more space because I would always, I would always have exactly enough space for the previous HTML, but not the new data. After learning about vectors and data structures, I decided to change it so that it acts like a vector. Every time we run out of space, we would double the size of it. Even if it means that some of the space is unused, we significantly reduce the amount of memory we have to reallocate every single time. So after, after getting the HTML, I would parse the HTML and populate it into a linked list of structs. These structs would have the link to the image, their similarity percentage, and the dimensions of the image. Then I would ask the user for which image they would like to download. And then I would generate an API link for that specific website domain. And then I would go to that specific website and then parse that website for the download link and the tags. So I had to do this for every single website that I wanted to support, which was kind of tedious. Finally, I would download the image and then that would be the end of the program. Looking back, if I were to do this again, I think I would change a lot of things. The first thing would probably be to use a different programming language. C is not very user friendly and doesn't really provide a lot in its standard library. So maybe something like Go or Rust or Python would be more suitable, especially since the performance gains of C aren't really realized in this program because the bottleneck is the network. Another thing I would change is probably how I handled the HTML form rather than looking for the input field and then programmatically pressing the submit button. I could have just sent the form post request in one go. But overall, this project was a really good learning experience. I got to get really familiar with C and the curl library. I'm really glad I came back and improved on it with my new knowledge from school. And this program even led me to implement this feature in other projects that I made. For example, the Discord bot I made with my friends now has a feature called Sauce, where if you give it an image, it would reverse image search it using IQDB and provide you with the results. And another feature is daily where it would parse a bunch of websites for the latest image and send it onto Discord for everyone to see. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what your first project was. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.